Hey, hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation, a conversation or dialogue about working with energy and being an empath. Now, I know that I've talked about this topic a ton on my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel. So there's lots of content about being an empath and working with energy over there. And I was trying to think of who, I know who I want to talk to about this topic. I'm not sure if you all are gonna think it's like your absolute fave, but, and maybe I'll do, maybe I'll talk to two different people about this topic and, and do a couple different videos. We'll, we'll see how this goes. But, but I want to talk with uh, Louise Hay, who is like a spiritual kind of a, a trailblazer for me from the afterlife. And she was the owner and of the publishing like powerhouse, Hay House, and just an incredible person and her journey and an unfolding. And I just gave so many people opportunities and supported um, the LGBTQ plus community. And I just, I just, my heart just, ugh, when I feel her, I just feel it's, so much compassion and love and just humanness like the kind of humanness that I really appreciate in people so let's talk with Louise Hay first about being an empath and about just energy in general maybe the sensitivity of our hearts might be a good thing right she's really good at this topic in this area so it's perfect so hey Louise I know it's been a while since we've talked, but I, I've been busy. I've been like humaning. I've been being a person. So, <laughs> and I always appreciate the reconnecting with you very much. I do definitely consider you a mentor as you well know. And so I appreciate it. Teacher, she says, and she kind of looks at me like teacher, like, like she wants to like give, give that to me. She like puts the energy of teacher back on me because that's something that, so let's just put Bridget's personal stuff out there. That's something that I kind of struggle with, honestly. I know some of you viewers might not realize that, but like words are a huge deal to me. Like words are a really big deal and because they have a vibration and there's a meaning and, and a resonance to them. So in translating what comes from spirit, I am so picky about the word choice it's it's really important and sometimes I get it wrong and I, when I do I can tell I can feel it you know so I'm trying to find the right one and sometimes there isn't a right one but I try to alignment right click 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 words but there is a word that I struggle with because it's not just a word it's a title or a label and it's it's really a positional power and I'm not sure how I feel about it in this context but she says teacher and like she puts it back toward me because I say teacher to her because that's how she feels to me. And she gives it right back to me like teacher, teacher. And I'm like, okay, let's take a breath in everybody. And exhale out so Bridget can keep her stuff together so we can do a channeling. Okay, <laughs> I'm working on it. And I'm working on it. Let me tell you, embracing or accepting the energy of that because it feels very responsible to me. And she says, you are leading by example. She says, you are leading by example, Bridget, here in this, this, this conversation. She's like, you're leading by example because energy does carry an incredible amount of, of responsibility with it from the mind's perspective. So now the mind takes upon itself to interpret feelings when they become mixed in as a form of energy as something that is needing to be controlled or managed or tamed. Okay, so emotions and feelings mixed as a form of energy need to be contained, tamed, according to the mind, right? Is that, did we get that right? Yes, she says yes. And the biggest, most challenging part of you, of your spiritual journey, body mind heart and soul is your mind she says so let's start with the mind and understand that the heart knows exactly the heart has so much wisdom and the heart knows exactly what you need and right when you need it and it 
it does its best to honor the feelings and emotions as they come in or rise up within you. Okay, so stop right there. What's the difference, Luis, between the feeling of emotional energy? So we're taking emotions, you guys, and energy, and we're kind of putting them together, but recognizing that they're not exactly the same thing, okay? But they are together in this context, okay? So what exactly is this rising up versus coming in or feeling? Like, it feels like there's a difference to me, to you guys too, right? Can you describe that? She says the uprising. Oh, I love that. That's a good that word. Yeah, uprising. She says the uprising comes from inside of you. It's wisdom from the ages that you carry in your body. The wisdom of your body brings this. She says, you know, it, it's housed in the chakras, which are a way to organize the energy within the body and to have a means of of communication externally with energy and allowing internal conversation to also occur. So both two ways of, multiple ways of communication, she says, various communication. And the, the, uh, the, the processing of the uprising that occurs is something that is a part of you wanting to be known so there is a part of a wisdom that may come from a past life experience or an early this life experience or even at times something that was is not remembered or seemingly insignificant yet emotional energy is attached or wrapped around that experience or circumstance and brings to you a a level of understanding that will help you with whatever it is that you're actually focusing on for your life now. So, so feeling the emotion when it comes rising up within you isn't necessarily a reaction, a direct correlation to something happening externally now. It's coming from a, a, a reverberation. No, that's not the right word. What's the right word? It's coming from a, like a remembrance, but it's not in the mind. It's like a body memory. It's not in the mind, you guys. She's like, it's, but it's not coming from the mind, going to the body and coming back up. It's not that, although she says, although that can happen. Yes, you can have a remembrance, which you would consider a trigger, memory, heart, feeling, and then going deeper into the body, into the solar plexus or the belly to process the information. But that, she says, that's like the incoming or the receiving. That would be considered receiving, although it is internal, it is very much something that is coming kind of, um, outside of like the heart channel, which the heart space is the primary channel for the processing of energetic information related to specifically and coming most obviously through the emotions, but physical sensory or senses with the body's alliance with the heart does also provide that, but we're focusing primarily on, as she said, the brain, but inside this rising up comes from like an inner knowing and inner wisdom that it's time for you to know this or that this piece of information needs to be brought forward for you because it will help. It will help you understand, give you some context, perspective to what's happening right here and you're watching. You're like, what is going on in the world? And all of a sudden emotions come up. You think you're reacting to that YouTube clip or to something someone said at the supermarket, but, but maybe you're not. Maybe it's something that's coming from deeper within you and coming up so that you can allow yourself the opportunity to integrate that wisdom so you can actually practically use it at some point. Okay, so what is the goal of this uprising? What is that? Is there like a purpose or intention for that information? And she says perspective is close. She said it's, it's really, um, perspective is a really close way to say it. It's the ability to give you to see something differently, is what she's saying. To understand and know and look at something different, differently. It's like a longer range lens, a wider, wider view. Yeah, wider. Because not necessarily longer into the future. Although I've seen that recently in my session, in my um, meditations. I've seen this really cool concept about long range time versus up looking at everything, bigger picture, seeing the whole picture. But long range, like into the future when you're doing visioning and manifestation. Oh, very cool. 
I have to do a video about that. Maybe I'm very grasshopper, but so this rising up, interesting. So it's our own inner wisdom that's bringing forward information to help us through emotion and energy. Yes, yes. And it feels different because it does feel like it arrives inside. <laughs> like it comes up from like somewhere in the belly or in the lower body, the hips and just like really grounded energy. And it comes up like kind of opens up or unfolds. It literally kind of unfolds like whoop, opens up like that. So, okay, so then what's the difference between that then and the intake of energy and emotion coming at us? Because sometimes it feels like a, like we're triggered, like somebody hook, has a hook in us or like we see that YouTube video and we're like, oh, it feels like somebody just put a poker in my heart or I just got like, I stepped on a sticker, but with my heart, <laughs> like, uh, uh, or my, my belly. So the two places I would feel it most is the heart and the belly. So heart and solar plexus, like a punch in the gut, that kind of thing. And, but the punch in the gut's different. Okay, let me just be clear. That's a little different. That's deep inner life work. When you get a punch in the gut, it's deep inner life work connected to your spirit, your life purpose in this timeline. That's what that's about. And organizing the difference between the past timelines and the current timelines. And timelines are a new thing that is shifting and changing so much more in the context of the human mindset and our experience here on earth now that we should probably do a bit about that too, maybe, huh? Let me be on Fair Grass Hop. Or maybe, oh, you know who would be good to talk about timelines? David Bowie. Oh, and now I'm saying this because I do, I will watch back this video and I'll take some notes so that I remember what I, what I can do. Great idea. See, Luis, you had such good ideas. So talk to us about this trigger kind of thing where somebody comes and kind of like, ooh, ooh, hot in the heart, kind of poking, you're poking, you're poking, can you step back kind of energy? You know, how does that, like, do we let that happen? Are we attracting that to us? Like, what's the deal with that? Because it, it's an emotional response, it's kind of physical in many cases. For me, I really feel stuff very physically. My body, and maybe for you guys too, my body and my heart are like, I got you, like alliance. Like, I got you and I'm never going to let you go like that. That kind of sweet, sweet partnership. My heart and my body are like, mm, I got you. I love that. That would be a good meditation. Okay, okay. I, ideas. <laughs> I got lots of ideas. Okay, so talk to us about that, though. Talk to us about that emotion, energy, and that trigger. How's that? She says, now when you deal with the intellect and the mind, which is trying to organize things, the mind is trying to understand or trying to find, okay, sure, I'm seeing some images, some like um, graphic images of, um, like graphics, pictures, graphics, pictures of like matching things up and where did things plug in. It's like um, when you have like a thousand different kinds of chords and you're like, which one fits which phone, the AirPods, the, the Android versus the, the iPhone that I have versus the, I mean, the, he the headphones that the, Bo the Bose headphones that the husband has and all, I mean, there's all this stuff, right? And there's, and you have to find the right plug-in. That's kind of the image I'm getting, all right? So it's, it's messy, let's just say that. So the mind searches from what she's showing me, is this accurate, reflect, yeah. Yes, very reflective. You, you got it, Bridget. And she's like, yes. Um, searches to make the connection between this trigger and something that f you've experienced before in the mind. It could be a memory or it could be a fear. So, so if you're triggered, what comes up is this um, incredible rush of discomfort that usually feels like pain or fear. So it kind of activates the whole fight or flight or freeze or fawn, I guess. Um, scenario reaction within the body like it's like a survival thing but but the mind searches for something to connect to the emotional trigger the emotional surge the quick woo, emotional things the mind quick goes okay what 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 does this match what matches this what matches this what matches this and it goes oh fear oh fear fear of what fear of death fear of loss not having money which is loss fear of death is also loss I mean, there's all this stuff, right, that, that can get triggered. And so the mind tries to make a match. And then when that match is made, then even if we settle down, like we can let go of that clip that we saw, it's still with you energetically because there was a match, a click that was made. And usually it's to a reoccurring life pattern or theme 
that you may consciously be aware of or not. If you're not consciously aware of it, you're gonna get crabby, your mood will change, you will feel more heavy, more tired, more fatigued as a result of that trigger. I'm just gonna tell you, physical body response is very normal. This is normal, there's nothing wrong with you. You don't need your diagnosis out and your chart of, okay, what, what is happening because I'm this, this is why it's happening. No, you don't need that. You just need to understand that physical reactions are natural. It's natural. I mean, do you remember giving a speech in like seventh grade, getting up in front of a room full of people? And even if you love giving speeches, you're still nervous, like getting hot and, and sometimes your mouth gets dry and you feel a little shaky and all of a sudden you have to go to the bathroom and like that, right? That's physical body responses. That's like a normal thing for us. Our body gives us info, right? Based upon how we feel, sensory feelings. So I, I, it seems like depending upon whether you know the theme or not or the match that's happening is going to be a pivotal pivotal point for you in dealing with the trigger and understanding the emotional energy of it because it so many of us are so busy trying to avoid the emotions avoid 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 deflect no not me oh i'm distracted oh i'm ignoring you oh i'm gonna get busy helping somebody else with something instead of dealing with my something does that sound like you you don't have to raise your hand. I'll raise mine because it's totally me. I know my pattern for avoiding emotion. I know that very well. I know that. I'm really good at it. So I, I, I call it like I see it. So if you're in session with me when I'm doing intuitive coaching and you do that, I will mention that to you multiple times just to help you be aware. Because when you're aware, then you can change things and you can work with energy productive and helpful to you instead of just responding to it like, oh, I'm triggered. Oh, now what do I do? Well, guess what? Now you can work with that energy. How do you want to work with that energy? You do have choice. When you're consciously aware, you have choice. And so when you get moody or crabby, that's a way that you can tend to the moodiness or crabbiness, the after effects of what just happened for you energetically and emotionally. You can tend to that. That's one way you can manage it. However, there is a deeper, more profound way, and that is to work with the energy. When you understand that it's a trigger of fear of loss, that's something I've been dealing with, this like sense of grief. As you know, if you've been watching Fairy Grasshopper, the, the sense of loss or the grief on so many life changes that we've had, in fact, very tangible grief with the loss recently, I've had a loss of a client that died, I had a mother-in-law that died, I had I have a child that's going away to college, so there's he's grieving and I'm feeling his grief and I'm also having my own because now I have two kids out. I'm like halfway done. I got two out, two in. Oh, and when they leave, by the way, if you don't know this, if you're younger in the parenting arena, it's not easier necessarily when they're out of the house. It's just different and you still worry about them and such. So been working on that, working on that whole process. But when you can be aware, so the grief piece, for example, is a sense of loss or a, a fear of loss. Like I don't wanna lose somebody, whether it be through separation, physical separation, like they move or through something more, um, more deeply emotional, you know, like, like loss through death or um, other, other kinds of loss like that and that's it's unfortunate because the loss piece that the fear of the loss for me is it, it affects everything like money food like um money food work like it's been hard for me to um balance the healthy letting go of clients and the natural attrition of like how some clients just they they're in a different place and how there's new clients that come in and they have a little different needs. And so it's kind of like this um, loss of routine maybe. That might, be, that might be something too, loss of that routine that creates the stability and the comfort. Okay, so this is my stuff. So let's, let's focus on your stuff. <laughs> it's like a therapy session. Are we talking to Robin Williams? No. We're talking to Louise Hay, but this gives you an idea. So you take that information that you know and you journal about it. So what I do is I'm like, oh, this is my 
fear of loss that's triggered. Okay, I understand what this is, so I know how to work with it. So I might journal about it, or I might do like, um, make a list of, of things that are, are positive that I have in my life that I love, or connect into things that are afterlife or spiritually connected, like archangels. Because even if some someone or something can't always be with you or isn't always tangibly right here with you right now, there is a spiritual level of consistent connection and that's not broken. So there really is no loss then. There's only a different way of connecting. And that's profound and that's really new for me and that's amazing. And now I know that obviously we can connect when you know, the soul, you can still connect with the soul and all that, but this is different. It's like this really deeper understanding for me of, of understanding that the relationship continues and it evolves. It even gets better and ascent, more ascended, you know? And that's like, wow, that's like inspiring. So the trigger then becomes something that gives me something good, really beneficial. And as long as I don't get stuck in a spiral of, oh, this is so bad, and oh, is it lost, sad, and even if I'm sad, I feel the emotion of, of sadness, then I cry, I let myself cry, or if I feel angry, I can yell, and like I let myself express the emotion, and the energy must flow, so that's a huge part, I think, of processing the emotions. So, all right, oops, I just dropped my thing here. All right. So, wow, that was kind of deep. Whoo, okay, I wish I would have brought my coffee out here. I could use a little bit of a sip right now, but okay. So, what else can you share with us about energy and being an empath? Because you're talking about the mind. So, is there any, like, tips you can give us or advice about the brain and the mind? Maybe thoughts. Will you talk to us about thoughts related to emotions and energy? It's like, I don't, I'm confused by what comes first, the thought or the feeling. And she says right away, she says, either, both. It, it's like the chicken and the egg thing, you guys. She's like, it's both. It, it really just, it's, it's what, what works for you and how you are wired. She's like showing me how you're wired, like how you're calibrated. Sometimes it's the emotion, sometimes it's the thought, and sometimes it's the opposite. Like it, things can be different. So it, it's really like a kind of a balance maybe either or both <laughs> okay so can you give us some tips about the thoughts though or about the mind or working with the mind like the positive thought thing and the affirmations like does that work like how does that work she says you know it works <laughs> she says <laughs> thank you Louise. she said you know it works yes it does it does because when you repeat to yourself, she's like, you start a rhythm or a cycle in your mind and you repeat something that you want or that you know is something helpful for you or healthy or positive, then you become in alignment with that. She's saying rhythm. It's interesting. She doesn't use the word alignment. You know, you're not using the word alignment. That's a Bridget word. Um, but she's using the word rhythm. You become in rhythm with it, like in step with it. And it kind of becomes a, a routine or something you can rely on. That's what she said. Yes, that's what affirmations and mantras are. She said they're, that's the same. It creates a rhythm for you. And she says it's not so I'm, I'm asking in my head. I better say this out loud. Is it a distraction though? Is a mantra or a or a affirmation, is that a distraction, a thought distraction? She says, yes, in, in a sense it is. So you can use the idea of distraction as something very positive for you, but I wouldn't consider it distraction. I would consider it a, a natural choice that you are making to choose the rhythm, to choose the, uh, the way that you want to to move through your day, for example, and you put this in your head like she says, oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful example. She says, you know how when you get a song in your head, it might even be, she says, for like one of the commercials or something, you get it in your head and it kind of just plays and then it stops for a while and later in your day, you're at the post office or, and then it kind of starts up again in your mind, but it's just in your mind. Like it didn't mean, doesn't mean you heard the song. It's not an external trigger. You just, just kind of pops in there and it's kind of rolling around. 
you can consciously do that, she says. You can consciously choose through mantras and affirmations what is rolling around in your head. What is the cycle or the pattern, as you would say, Bridget, she says. The rhythm. You can create the rhythm. You can do that. And it's so, so, she says, it is so simple. And yet so many people don't realize really how powerful it can be. So you should try it. She says, you should try it. Hmm. A long time ago, I listened to a thing with uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. He's also in the afterlife and the two of them are friends. So, um, uh, and it was like, I am affirmation. So it was like, you would say, I am. And then whatever affirmation you wanted to have, like, I am beauty. I am love. I am hope. I am peace. I am faith. I am light, I am, like that, for example. Or you can just have one word or phrase over and over and over and over again if you chose to do that. So, I mean, something really simple, like, you could just say one word over and over again, like, believe, 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 or faith, faith. There's a lot of choices there. Do you see how the energy just went? And that's kind of like, oh, this is some nice energy right here, right now. That's a Louise Hay kind of vibe. <laughs> awesome. All right, you guys, I think that's good for now. I think we've had a good conversation today with Louise Hay from The Afterlife. Check out Hay House Publishing. They have Hay House Radio. There's like an app. There's all sorts of stuff like that. We might as well put a plug in, even though you're dead. I'm sure you don't mind. <laughs> don't mind me doing that for you. Oh my goodness. Okay. But there's lots of resources on there that might inspire your spirit and continue to fill you with hope. Finding different topic area areas, you know, like astrology or shamanism or um, a law of attraction or singing bowls or healthy eating habits, spiritual eating or all that kind of stuff. You know, just really cool variety of stuff that might help you be focused, distracted, focused in a more positive, interesting way. That might give you some inspiration too. So talk about good, good energy vibes, right? Thank you so much. I appreciate connecting with you today. It's been lovely. It, it always is. So thank you for being here. And thank you for watching. Hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. Remember, this is your life after all. This. This is your life. <laughs> and you have to live it. You get to. You have this opportunity to live it. So just live it. Thanks for being here.